Mr. Alexander? Dr. Hunt is ready for you. Thanks, Melody. Well, your blood work is all within normal range. You have the coronary arteries of a 20-year-old. Well, I just ran the Paris Marathon, my 10th overall. Not, not that I'm bragging. You should be bragging. You're putting the rest of us to shame. Yeah, well, it's not like things are perfect. You know, I turn 61 next week. Mm -hmm. I'm not superstitious, but that's when my father died. Prostate cancer. I'm sorry. Losing a parent is so hard. Well, if it helps, your PSA is normal, and it has been that way for the last 20 years since you started testing with Dr. Abrams. But a normal level doesn't guarantee that something abnormal is not going on inside me. The MRI will confirm all that. Will you call me as soon as the results come in? Of course, yes. I'm uh, on my way to get a coffee. Want one? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Mm, your aura is telling me your mind is someplace else. My aura. <clears throat> Sorry. I guess I am a little bit distracted. My children want a dog. And they've been through so much. I just have this feeling that they're going to bury all their pain into an animal and never really express the things that matter. Well, your kids probably feel overwhelmed at all the changes in their lives. A dog will give them comfort. When they get into a safe zone, they'll, they'll open up. I'm worried they're never gonna open up. They're teenagers. Right. Oh, you're, uh, you're free for a while. Next patient's at 3 p.m. Okay. Cute. Oh, thank you. I'm flattered. I was referring to the cats, but I think you knew that. Mm-hmm. Yin and yang. Huh? Cats make wonderful pets. They're very independent, hardly any work required. I'm here to find a dog, in theory, anyway. <sighs> dog person. I guess. Is that really a thing? Yeah, for sure. Cat owners and dog owners have very different personalities. Really? Yeah. Yeah, see, I read this study where cat people tend to be creative thinkers and dog people, on the other hand, they're known to be <laughs> conventional. See, because I read that dogs and their owners tend to be more outgoing and expressive. Yeah, the study also said that cat people exhibit higher levels of intelligence. Albert Einstein had a dog. Did he? Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, it is just a study. Not a good one. No, you might have a point there. <laughs> but did you know that it is a fact that cats, like their owners, can be mysterious? Dogs and their owners can be quite clever. Yeah, or just loud. <laughs> okay, see? I rest my case. <laughs> okay. Well, on that note, I really enjoyed our little chat. It was nice to meet you. Thank you. Pleasure is all mine. I'm Jack. By the way. I'm Rachel. Enjoy your cats. Thank you. <laughs> Dog person. Yeah. Yeah, cat people are better. We're better, aren't we? Sorry, I'm late. Oh, that's OK. I know you're tight for time. I ordered ahead for us. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. And before you ask, my cholesterol is fine. Who said anything? You didn't have to. Your eyes betrayed you. Hey, what is that over there? Works every time. Hey, do you talk to the twins? Of course I talk to the twins. Why? Well, adjusting from school in Germany to school here can't be easy, but 
They never tell me anything important. If they're two good kids, I wouldn't worry. Well, promise me you'll tell me if you hear anything. You want me to rat on them? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Afternoon meditation. I find it centering. You should try it. You find me off centered. No comment, but I can teach you how. Maybe later. In the meantime, I need you to check on Mr. Alexander's MRI results. Done. He's fine. No sign of any abnormal tissue. He will be so relieved. Please let him know. I already tried his cell. No answer. And his office wasn't any help. Oh, okay. Well, keep trying, please. Will do. Excuse me, sir. Are you okay? Uh, not really. I'm a doctor. May I help you? I uh, appreciate that. All right. Tell me what's going on. Oh, I got this sharp pain in my stomach. Left to the right side? Left. You have a fever. I recognize the hat. You served with Geronimo? Yes, ma'am. Afghanistan. Heaven on earth. I was there too. Kandahar trauma surgery. I got my leg shot up pretty bad on a raid. You folks saved it. I... Okay. All right. We're going to get you over to the hospital. Okay. See what's going on. Okay. Hey. May I? Yeah, sure. Okay. Looks like acute diverticulitis. They'll probably keep you here overnight and run some tests. No, no, I can't do that. Oh, hey, you don't have a choice. I got Mickey. They're holding on onto him in the back. He can't stay here overnight. Well, I'm sure they can figure something. He's all I got, Doc. What if you took him? What, took your dog? Oh, please. He'd just be for a night or two. He's adorable. We love him. But... He's well-trained. He loves people. I suppose... Oh, thank you. Of course. I'll make sure he's well taken care of. Thank you so much. Hi, Ross. This is Dr. Hunt. Please give me a call when you get this. Thank you. All right. Come here, you. Let's go. Oh, my goodness. Good dog. Let's go. Oh, Mickey. I hope you like teenagers. Sorry, I'm so late. <gasps> Mom, you want us a dog? <laughs> this is Mickey. Sit. <laughs> Boy, he's a big one. Don't get excited, everyone. He's not ours. Someone needed my help, so we're fostering him until he can go back to his owner. Cool. Consider it a tryout for the future. Bye-bye. <laughs> I have been trying to reach Ross Alexander since yesterday afternoon. I left a couple of messages. No response. Oh, he's got a lake house about an hour north. Uh, he likes to go up there and fish. But there's probably no cell service. Maybe, but he was pretty anxious for these test results. Well, I'm sure he'll call you back soon. You know what? I'm going to swing by his house on my way to the office. Well, I'll try his home office. He likes to hang out there and work. Okay. See ya. Ross? It's Rachel Hunt. Hello? Anybody home? Ross?
you were alone when you found the body? Yes, I stopped by because I had some medical information for Mr. Alexander and he wasn't answering his phone. What information? A clean MRI of his prostate. He was remarkably healthy for a man his age. You'll be performing a full autopsy. Not without signs of foul play. Heart attack or cerebral hemorrhage from a stroke or aneurysm are the likely causes. The dilated pupils, the tears. Probably reactions to the event that caused the death. Look, sometimes the body just quits and there's nothing anyone can do. I've known since you were five years old when you eat those candies what that means. You're upset. Why don't you take the rest of the day off and rest? I can't. I have a full afternoon scheduled. Where's Mickey? Upstairs asleep. Speaking of, I heard you again last night. I talked to some vets I know. Nightmares, sleeplessness, it's not uncommon. You can get some help. Looking backward is a waste of time. Moving forward is a solution. Rachel, you don't always have to be so strong. Oh, well, but I do. Kids don't need to see me coming apart at the seams. Okay, well, let's put the war aside. What about what just happened? Finding Ross dead? You need time to process the shock of that. Fortunately, death is a big part of my job. Have you any idea how he died? No. The coroner thinks it was some unknown natural cause. Well, I suppose that does happen. Maybe. But not usually to someone whose doctor just gave them a clean bill of health. And I can't force him to perform an autopsy, so... Well, what do you think an autopsy might find? Well, his arteries were totally clean, making a heart attack unlikely. I would like to rule out a cerebral hemorrhage. Because? Because then I would know it wasn't a natural cause, and I could start looking for the real reason. Well, you need to talk to Jack Quinn. He's the head detective here in town. If something needs to be found, Jack is the cop to do it. Okay, I can't walk into a police station with nothing but speculation. Well, I know when Jack has his lunch every day, so I'm sure I can arrange a, an informal introduction. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. So the perps just waltzed in. Yeah, it smells like an inside job to me. Okay, run backgrounds on all of the employees. We'll bring them in for interviews and double check to see if there's any security cameras in the area. Uh, Jack, okay. thanks. You remember me talking about my daughter, the army surgeon? Oh, it's you. Hi, Jack. You two know each other? We met, sort of. Jack is a highly intelligent man who loves cats. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's me. At least the cat part, anyways. Yeah, well, I'll let you two chat. Bye, honey. Bye, Dad. Two coffees, please. This is a coincidence? Yes, it certainly is. Rick mentioned that you're in the military. Served overseas. So, what did you do there? Uh, mostly battlefield surgeries to start. And then I was assigned to the military forensic team. Thank you. We look into losses that were in any way questionable. We needed to be absolutely certain and be able to prove to the brass and the press uh, who died from what. It was difficult but essential work. I thought it was important to help in any way that I could. Well, it certainly seems like you did then, and more. <laughs> About yesterday. I'm really sorry if I came off. No, I'll forgive you on two conditions. Name them. First, promise me you'll never bark in public again. Done. <laughs> Secondly, help me get an autopsy for Ross Alexander. I was his doctor, and something about his death doesn't sit right with me. Coroner's report already ruled that as natural causes. After the most cursory look-see ever. Autopsies rarely tell us anything new, other than being very expensive. It's not like combat. In this town, you're not going to find many cases of intentional death. I'm sure that you know your stuff, but... I can't call the coroner's office without something more concrete. Sorry. Well, 
even for a family member, that would be an unusual request. I just have a terrible feeling I might have missed something. And if I could examine him, that would really put my mind at ease. Well, as long as it stays between the two of us, I don't see what harm a little once-over would do. May I? Of course. Um, if you'll excuse me. Meredith, Leonard, I am so sorry for your loss. Uh, this is my brother, Phil. Uh, Ross was so respected in the community. His loss is a great tragedy. Well, it's very kind of you to say thank you. I know we came unannounced, but we're hoping we can see him now, if possible. Well, if you'll give me a few minutes, I can prepare him for viewing. I'll check the schedule. Excuse me. Hello, I'm Dr. Rachel Hunt. Yes, you're the doctor that found Ross. Yes, I am. Uh, Mrs. Meredith Alexander. Uh, Ross was my brother-in-law. Leonard Alexander, he was my brother, and this is my wife's brother, Phil Lewis. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. Ross was in excellent health when I saw him. Nothing suggested this outcome. I'd like to know what happened, and as his brother, you can authorize an autopsy. You want permission to cut him open? Are you serious? The coroner's office handles these procedures with great discretion and respect. Yeah, I, have, I, I appreciate your concern, but I, I can't let you put our family through that. I'm sorry. I see. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. Dr. Hunt. What happened back there was very upsetting. I am so sorry. That was not my intention. I'll go apologize. No, don't. Best thing you can do right now is keep your nose out of our family's business. You know, Rach, you are the spitting image of your mom. You think so? Oh, yeah. Especially in that lab coat. You know, I think I might have been her very first patient. Oh, I think that was probably my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're right. We're so glad to have you back home, Rachel. And I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you, Lynn. Well, this has always been home. And Steve and I had planned to come back here after our military careers were over. How are the kids doing? Well, I will feel a lot better once they've settled in. <laughs> well, I'll just give it time. With a mother like you, they'll find their way. Thank you. So, your blood work is excellent, and everything else is well within normal. That's a relief. Mm -hmm. Our health is everything. I mean, look at poor Ross. I was devastated by his sudden death. It was a shock to all of us. He was such a dear friend. He and his late wife, Katie, they, they were like family. I just had lunch with him last week. He seemed fine. I mean, he was upset about something that day, but... What do you mean, upset? Well, he had to step away from the table to take a call, and I could hear how heated it became. It's almost like he was being threatened. Threatened how? I don't know. I certainly didn't want to ask, but uh, I had never seen Ross so upset. That was the last time I saw him. Hmm. Your witness sounds pretty vague about what she heard. Detective Quinn has... Jack. Jack. Something is not right with Ross Alexander's death. I had a look at the body. He almost certainly didn't have a heart attack, and the other indicators tell me he didn't die of natural causes. The question is, what happened? Who let you look at the body? Uh, the funeral home and the family. Really? 
<clears throat> Regardless, this is the kind of thing we saw a lot of in Afghanistan. A death would seem like one thing and then turn out to be something else entirely. Rachel, I'm sorry. This is in Afghanistan. This sort of thing just doesn't happen here. Can you be certain? Well, what are you suggesting? An autopsy. As much as I would love to do that for you, I can't just ask for an autopsy, which is very expensive and invasive based on you having a funny feeling. What I can do is I can look into the phone records and see if there's anything there about the call. And if there is, then we can move in that direction. But if there isn't, we leave it at that. Okay, fair enough. Thank you, Jack. Well, it sounds a little ghoulish poking around a dead body. <laughs> I'm sure the family wasn't too pleased. But learning that somebody threatened Ross, that's important. I don't think Jack Quinn was very impressed with me. I'm going to keep poking around. I owe that to Ross. Well, I admire your intention. But nothing can be done about the most important thing. Ross is gone. Nothing can be done. That's what the doctor said when mom was sick. You know me, I can't rely on others. I need to figure things out for myself. True. What about that brother-in-law? Didn't he warn you to stay away from the family's business? Made you guys cookies. Thanks, honey. Oh, don't mind if I do. He was just reacting emotionally. The whole family is broken up. I'm sure they would be very grateful if I found something concrete. Wait, what help isn't wanted? Um, your mom's investigating Mr. Alexander's death. She feels it wasn't natural. I just have suspicions, that's all. Mom, you should go to where he works and ask about enemies. Like, that's what they do in SVU. SVU. Special Victims Unit. Smart kid. <laughs> Rachel, uh, Ross's doctor, right? Yes. Avery Smith. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Please, let's go to my desk. You know, I can't begin to tell you how shaken up we all are here. None of us knew Ross was ill. Well, that's the thing, Mr. Smith. He wasn't. He was very healthy. Please, call me Avery. Avery. Can you think of anyone who may have... Um, well, who may have wanted to harm Ross? No. And you're not going to find that person here. His writers, editors, publishers... Everyone who worked for Ross loved him. That seems to be the universal opinion. And yet, you're asking if he had any enemies. Yes. Well, he was threatened in a phone call last week. You know, Ross prided himself on our hard-hitting investigative work. He never pulled any punches when it came to what he was prepared to print. Did he ruffle anyone in particular? Dave Stringer comes to mind. Do you know him? Mm -mm. He's a local nursing homeowner accused of corruption. Ross did some of the investigating himself. Wait a second, I remember seeing that name on some papers when I found Ross. So, was there bad blood between Ross and this uh, Stringer guy? Certainly on Stringer's part. You know, I'm pretty sure Ross had a file. He always kept detailed notes on all the stories he was investigating on. Can we see it? Yeah, let me go grab it. Drowning in homework. I can't believe how much they give us. Well, I've got something that might turn that frown around. Well, that'd be welcome. A spot just opened up on the cheerleading squad. Interested? I've never even cheered a minute in my life. Like, when I have to try out or something. We'll teach you a couple moves. Okay. Yeah. When do you want to do this? How about now? Oh, well, I was just going to go home with my brother. <laughs> Look who's coming. <laughs> And if you persist in publishing defamatory articles, I will have no choice but to ruin you professionally and personally. Where did you get this? I met with Avery Smith at The Observer. It was in a file that Ross had. Did you see the articles? Drafts. One of them was on Ross's desk. Huh. Okay. Well, it's a potential motive, but still, there's nothing on means, an opportunity, and there's still no proof. Proof of foul play. So, no grounds for you to open an investigation? Well, maybe. It's a start. That combined with a threatening phone call. Yeah, I was going to tell you about that. So the call is unidentifiable, so it's most likely a burner phone. 
suspicious. It certainly raises more questions. You know what would provide some clarity? An autopsy. You don't like to take no for an answer. It's a dog person trait. Um, excuse me. It's family time. I understand, and I apologize for the intrusion. I'm with Metro PD, and I have a court order to have this body transferred for an autopsy. What? Don't you have any decency? Please, we're doing this for you and your family. This is a terrible time for our family. Can't you just leave us alone? You're only making it worse. I'm telling you, stay out of our business. We'll be in touch. That did not go well. No, no, it didn't. Listen, I'm gonna bring Stringer in, see if I can rattle his cage a bit. So we're on the same team, Detective Quinn. We've always been on the same team. I just didn't want you getting your hopes up until we knew that a homicide actually took place. I'm really hoping the autopsy's going to prove that. All right, I'll drop you off, and then I'll call you after the interview, let you know how it goes. Can I be there for it? Please? You know, we generally don't allow... At least let me watch? I have some experience with this. <laughs> okay, you can watch, but what you see and what you hear stays there. You and Mr. Alexander enjoyed an extensive correspondence. I didn't enjoy anything about Ross Alexander. We know, Dave. We have the emails. Well, he was trying to ruin me. That angered you? Yeah. How would you react? Not with the kind of threats that you made. I'll rip your heart out if you continue. It's a figure of speech. Besides, I thought he died of a heart attack. Now, why would you say that, Dave? Because the cause of death hasn't been stated. Do you know something that I don't know? Something you want to tell me, Dave? Why don't we start with where you were the night that Ross Alexander died? I was hoping he'd confess and beg for mercy. The cases are rarely that dramatic. Mostly we build them one piece at a time. Hey, chin up. We're just getting started. Hey there. How are you feeling today? Better. Can you tell them I'm okay to go? Not so fast. I spoke to the doctor in charge, and she said your diverticulitis has improved, but they're not quite ready to discharge you yet. This is where you need to be for now. Do you have a regular doctor? No. Okay. Well, you do now. As soon as you're discharged, I want to see you in my office. We're going to get you better. Deal? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Doc. I just... I can't wait to see Nikki. I miss him. I'm sure he misses you, too. I promise you, he is getting a lot of love and attention. Okay. Good. David. You didn't list an address or whether you have a job on your admittance form. I, uh, I haven't been able to make rent, so they're going to kick me out. I've been looking for work, but I'm having trouble finding a job. Ever worked in a kitchen? Yeah, I learned how to cook in the Marines. They love my cooking. You never tasted a burger until you tasted one of mine. Mickey will tell you. <laughs> the cafe I go to is looking for some help. I think they'd like you. You think so? I do. I'll speak to them. I'm sure we can work something out if you're OK with that. Oh, yeah, definitely. Great. <laughs> is that my slipper? Um, yeah, he found it. I've been looking for that. So I just heard from Chloe. She's trying out for cheerleaders. Ah, exciting. I think it's good for her. A chance to make some new friends. I guess. If those are the kind of friends you want. <laughs> well, 
How about you? Are you still thinking of joining the chess club? Maybe. I think it's good to get involved. I'm just not as confident and outgoing as Chloe is. Honey, not everyone is outgoing, and that is fine. You are so many other things that are special. Okay, Mom. I will give it some thought. Okay. Um, hey, Chloe mentioned that you're investigating a patient who died? You think someone may have killed him? Well, I'm not sure, but I do think somebody might have wanted to hurt Mr. Alexander, and I want to figure out who that could be. Quite bono. Hmm? Latin. Who benefits? Who benefits? Mr. Flexner, thank you for seeing me. Of course. Ross Alexander was a dear friend, as well as a client. As you know, I treated him just before his untimely passing. You know, he was one of the smartest businessmen that I'd ever met. Please. Dr. Hunt, I have to ask you, why exactly is Ross's doctor coming to visit with his accountant and business manager? I was hoping to ask you some questions. Well, I'm not really sure what kind of help I could be. And the police said if they need any more information, they call. I'm wondering who might benefit from his death. Well, I'm sure you can appreciate that I can't really discuss any business that I have with Ross. Of course. Still, I'm hoping there are a few things you can talk about. There's really not much more to say. He ran a chain of very successful newspapers, solid investments, no debt. Now it's really just a case for the courts. What do you mean? Well, Ross was very superstitious about planning for his inevitable future. He died without a will. And with his wife having passed and no children, I assume that his assets will simply be passed along to his brother. Leonard. Leonard, that's right. He's next to kin. Does Leonard know this? You know, to be absolutely honest, I don't really think he and Ross ever spoke about him. Dr. Hunt. Hi. Hello, Meredith. I was going to call you. I'm glad we bumped into one another. I wanted to apologize for yesterday, how we all acted about the autopsy. It was unfortunate timing. You're doing what you think is best for Ross, and we all respect that. I mean, if there is something really amiss, then we should know. His memory deserves the truth, as do you and his whole family. Thank you so much. We all appreciate that. Of course. Rachel. Hey, so I just learned something really interesting. What is it? Ross died in test date. He had no will. Huh. Yeah, that is surprising considering his obvious wealth. Only update I have for you is we are still chasing down Stringer's alibi. So a confession and plea for mercy are still in play. The autopsy shows nothing suspicious about Alexander's death. And with no evidence of foul play, this investigation probably isn't going to go that far. I know that's very disappointing. Something feels off, Jack. There's more to it. A healthy man dies for no apparent reason, leaves no will. An angry businessman threatens his life. There are too many unanswered questions. There certainly is a lot to discuss. Perhaps over dinner, if you're up for that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Tonight? I know a fantastic Italian place that you might not have discovered. That sounds great. The police brought in Stringer. Of course, he denied having anything to do with Ross's death. Hmm. Does he have an alibi? They're running it down. Oh. Avery, Ross didn't die naturally. I am certain of it. But I can't prove it, much less convince the police. So, I did get more on Mr. Stringer. He was arrested two years ago. Assault with a deadly weapon. Apparently, he took a tire iron to some poor guy. I mean, he beat him up pretty bad. What happened? Charges were dropped. Let me guess, the victim's memory disappeared? 
The victim did. What? Yep, just up and vanished. No forwarding address, nothing. One day he was just gone, police never heard from him again. Does Quinn know this? Probably. Avery, if Ross was murdered, is Stringer capable of that? And if not him, then someone else, and why? Do you have another thread you can pull? I don't know. The coroner wasn't very helpful, and neither was Ross's accountant. Ah, just a bump in the road. More like a brick wall. There has to be something more to this. If I gave up every time I hit a dead end, I'd have exactly zero pieces of investigative journalism published. Can you lend me any journalistic expertise? Keep asking questions, Rachel. You never know when the story's about to break wide open. Okay. <sighs> Nothing in the autopsy suggests heart attack or cerebral hemorrhage. Then how do you explain his death? I'm not sure. And I'm okay with that. A, a toxin in his system would explain the dilated pupils and excess tears. It might. So we ran a standard preliminary analysis looking at 100 or so compounds like alcohol, cocaine, amphetamines, and some common poisons such as arsenic and strychnine. That's it? I also used our gas chromatograph, which tests for certain metals and subtle compounds. But I appreciate your hard work, but that leaves hundreds of other potentially poisonous substances. True. But I can't test for what I don't know. If you bring me a name, I can try. Short of that, you're out of luck. Okay, I'm going to send you a list of just a few more toxins to test for. I'll be on the lookout for it. Amatin, digoxin, ricin. Yes, yes, yes. Melody, do me a favor. Will you please call the coroner's office and give her this list of toxins to test for? Easy. Uh, it's five o'clock. Don't you have a big date to get ready for? It's not a big date. It's it's a professional dinner. Okay, we can call it that. Uh, either way, you better get going. I will. I just need my keys. I don't... <clears throat> did I put them in? Nervous about tonight? Does it show? Oh, boy, does it. Uh, just, just take a moment, okay? Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. That was good, thank you. I am so proud of you, Chloe. A cheerleader. Really? Yeah. You'll make a lot of new friends. I guess. They asked me to work on a car wash fundraiser. Ooh, that sounds fun. Maybe you could get Matthew involved. You think Matthew wants to hang out with a bunch of rah-rah girls and jocks? Well, it's tough moving to a new town. You know that. You two need to look out for each other. That's what brothers and sisters do. Okay, I get it. Not that. What about the black cocktail dress? Mm, that seems a little too formal. Like, this is a serious dinner. Maybe something like this? Like, I do this every night? But you don't. What? I go out with a man every night. In fact, this is the first time since... I know. Since your father. So is this like a real date? I don't know. <laughs> well, either way, you'll look beautiful. Did your grandpa pay you to say that? <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, I really wish we had something to celebrate. Well, you have two new roommates. Yin and Yang. Of course. To Yin and Yang. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So how about you, Miss Dog Lover? How's the search going? Uh, well, I'm trying to decide if the kids are ready. It's a big responsibility. We're looking after a friend's dog right now. Well, I wouldn't get too attached. I'm, I'm referring to the dog. Not the owner, you know, because otherwise I might have competition and I, I'd have to arrest him. The dog? Yeah, the dog. <laughs> so how are you dealing with adjusting to life outside of the military? I loved my time in the service. Next to raising two kids, it was the most rewarding experience of my life. But it's an adjustment, especially for the kids. Kids are very resilient, and I'm sure Given time, they'll adapt. Do you have kids? Yeah, they're called detectives. <laughs> I 
Actually, on that subject, I had my guys look at Stringer's alibi. It doesn't check out, so we're bringing him back in. But the only problem is, we still don't know if there's actually been a murder. Have you heard any news from the coroner's office? Well, I gave her a pretty lengthy list of substances to look for. I've got my fingers crossed. We need a breakthrough, Jack. Investigations take unexpected twists and turns all the time. Is this, um, too much shop talk for you? Believe it or not, I actually find it very endearing. I am. Um, this is Dr. Hunt. Uh, well, he's sitting right here. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we need to go. That was the coroner's office. I thought you'd want to see this. I found traces of one lethal toxin, succinylcholine. Significant amounts were present in Alexander's tissues. Translation, please. Succinylcholine is often used as a paralytic agent in anesthesia. It's also known as the perfect poison because it's nearly impossible to detect. Could this have killed him? Absolutely. Ross Alexander was murdered. So, your instincts were spot on. Must feel good. For a second, yeah. But then I thought about the depravity of what was done to him. Well, we got the how. Now we just need the who. I'm all ears. Okay, so I did do some digging on Leonard Alexander since he stands to inherit the entire estate. But everyone I spoke to said me and Ross got along great. Unless the potential windfall outweighs any brotherly love. See, that's the thing. By all accounts, Leonard and his wife live a very comfortable life. A house on the beach in Cabo, a pied de terre in New York. So putting poison and a hypodermic needle in his hand seems like a bit of a long shot. Just one caveat. His business is feast famine, depending on interest rates and home buying. And as of late, the waters have been pretty choppy. He doesn't strike me as a murderer. He did promise Meredith you keep her in the loop, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so pay the lovely couple a visit, tell them about the poison, see how they react in a moment. Seems a little devious. Bingo. Investigative Journalism 101. You're learning, Rachel. Poisoned? Are you sure? There is no other explanation for the succinylcholine in the system. That's... that's horrible. I, I... I cannot imagine anyone wanting to do such a thing to Ross. That's what I was hoping to figure out. Who might have a reason to do something like this? A personal beef or a business dispute? No, as far as I know, he got along with everyone, right? Yeah. No business dealings that went bad? No, I... I, I don't know anything about Ross's business dealings. Is there anything else, Dr. Hunt? Yes. Do you know a Dave Stringer? No. Yes. Uh, that's the guy that... The, 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 oh, the guy who owns the nursing homes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. I, I'm, I'm aware of him. He sent some very threatening emails to Ross. Oh, Ross never said anything to us. Do you think it could be him? I don't know. Thank you for your time. I'm sure the police will let you know if they learn anything at all. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hunt, for coming by. I'll, um, I'll pick you up. Hey there. Oh, hey. How's Mickey? He's good. I'm sure he misses you, though. We've been to hell and back together. David, Dr. Stein says you're not taking your medication. You need to do that. You have a number of conditions that need addressing. I guess I just don't see the point. These aren't difficult problems to treat. You don't understand. In the past 10 years, all I've been doing is treating medical problems. This diverticulitis, it's only the latest. Okay, well, I know about the blood pressure. What else is going on? I got a metal rod holding my leg together. And every year, it seems uh, an infection flares up and threats of amputation. Okay, that's gotta be tough. Yeah, well, you can see my house seems pointless. David, we both saw a lot worse in that war. Well, I lost my faith to that war and my health. As far as I can tell, you didn't lose a thing. I lost my husband. His name was Steve. 
it was a special ops raid gone bad in Syria. I lost family. I shouldn't have said that. We were all there for a reason. Now, do you have any family, anyone who matters to you? Other than Mickey? Mm -hmm. I got some nieces and nephews. I see them often enough. I've got my son and daughter. They're what get me through this. I'm betting that your nieces and nephews need you. And I know that Mickey needs you. Hey, Matthew. What? Just thought I'd be nice and say hi, that's all. Hey. Easy, huh? Anyway, you probably know about the car wash that's happening this weekend. Yeah, the cheerleader thing. We could really use the help, so hoping I can count on you. Sure, I guess. Also, there's a party happening afterwards at one of the girls' houses. Thought maybe you want to come with me. Really? Yeah, you might meet some people, make some new friends. Yeah, okay. Hey, Jack. Hey. It's in the neighborhood. I was just stopping off for some takeout, and I thought I would take the chance that maybe you love Chinese food, too. <laughs> Are you full of surprises? I do love Chinese food. Well, we did get interrupted, as you recall, in our last dinner. And, you know, we didn't really get a chance to get to know each other. Let's see what you brought. This is delicious. Mm -hmm. Where did you find this place? I can't divulge that information. They're in the witness protection program. <laughs> Stop. Speaking of divulging, I recall divulging quite a bit the other night at dinner. And yet I know very little about Detective Jack Quinn. Tell me about yourself. From the Midwest, dad was a fireman. Mom was a kindergarten teacher. Hmm. They're both retired, they live upstate. I visit them often. As a good son should. And two years ago, I moved here to take over the detective division. You know Mrs. Quinn along the way? No. I was close. I was engaged a few years back. And? And I was involved in a shooting, and after that, she decided that a policeman's wife wasn't what she was into. You were shot? Bullet just grazed me, so it doesn't count. If it hits you, it counts. I would know. I've sewn up plenty of bullet wounds in my time. Yeah, I guess you would have. Mm. I'm sorry, I have to take this. Okay. Hi. All right, well, then we'll see if he makes bail in the morning. Yeah, on my way. I'm sorry, I have to go. Seems mm. like a theme it's fine. for us. You know that recent robbery that happened at the pharmaceutical warehouse? Mm -hmm. Guess what was taken? Sucks on a choline. Yeah, and there's more. My team just arrested a local dealer who was holding some of the stolen oxy that was taken at the same time. Is he the one that stole it in the first place? Don't know. He's not talking. He's lawyered up. But if I can get him to start talking, then we're that much closer to finding the killer. Sit. Up, up. Oh, more candies. Feeling better? Not really. My mind is racing. I keep wondering what I'm missing. I thought running was supposed to clear your head. That's what you always said. Not today. I can't let this go, Dad. There's this guy, Dave Stringer, who may have a motive. You know, I have some ideas about the murder if you're interested. Shoot. Well, Russ was a great guy, but how well did we really know him? I mean, I don't know a man who doesn't have some secrets. Hmm. Care to share yours? Not with you. But isn't digging into Ross's personal life a little... Invasive? Well, I was thinking creepy. But if you were okay with creepy, where would you start? His laptop, I guess. Oh, the police will have that already. You are angling to be part of our little investigative team. I... Uh, in investigate? <laughs> no.
Thank you. I haven't said a lot about my husband. Practically nothing. Honestly, it's still pretty raw, even though it's been two years. He wasn't even supposed to be on that mission. He was supposed to be in a supervisory role only, but one of his men got sick and he volunteered. Do you resent his choice? No, because that was Steve. Always the first to jump in the way of danger. Jack Quinn and I had dinner again. That's, that's good, right? I don't know if it's too soon to be dating. I'm afraid how the kids will respond if it goes any further than just dinner. How do you feel? I don't know. Hey, Jack. Rachel, hey. Look, I'm really sorry, but I'm headed to court. Oh, that's okay. I just have a quick question. Ross's laptop, was there anything on it that might give us clues? Been through it. Mind if I take a look? Rachel. Can't hurt, right? Okay. But it can't leave evidence lockup. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have to go. Thank you. Squad May, what you doing? Oh, just working on my lit homework. Mm -hmm. Glad I caught you. Something we need to discuss. Your brother. Matthew, like, what about him? I saw you put his name on the guest list for the car wash after party. Yeah, you told me to invite people. Yeah, but it's getting kind of full now, so maybe you could take him off. You want me to disinvite him? He's kind of different. But he's not different, I mean, like, Maybe he's not as social as it's others. It's just with so many people coming, we thought maybe you could help us out. Oh. Thanks for being a team player, Chloe. Knew I could count on you. Avery, I just discovered something huge. Ross had a son. A genetic son, whom he'd only recently come into contact with. His name is Danny Murphy. That's news. And get this, in their last message, they talk about a plan to meet the night before I discovered Ross's body. Maybe that's your killer. That's exactly what I'm thinking. There was no will, so Danny Murphy is Ross's only offspring. He stands to inherit everything. Danny Murphy's got quite the rap sheet. Long criminal record, a history of armed robbery, history of drug addiction. So if you could place him at Anderton Medical Supply the other night. Yeah, that is my working theory. Tracking him down now, we'll see what he has to say. I'm sorry to drop by unannounced. I have some information to share with Leonard. Is he here? Uh, Leonard's on his way back. If you'd like to wait, I can offer you tea. Unfortunately, I don't have much time. Oh, thank you. Please. There's something I think you should know. Okay. We've learned that Ross had a biological son, a man whom he just met through FamilyRootsDNA.com. Uh, are you serious? His name is Danny Murphy. Ross didn't tell you or Leonard about him? No. No, never. And Leonard would have said something if they discussed it. How is this possible? Apparently, he was involved with a woman decades ago before he met Katie, and they gave Danny up for adoption as a baby. I guess he didn't want anyone to know about this. And this Danny Murphy, where is he now? He has been in and out of prison and halfway houses and just showed up. They were supposed to meet at a hotel the night that Ross died. What did the police say? They want to talk to him. That's all that I know. You'll let Leonard know that I stopped by? Of course. 
And you'll let us know if you hear anything else. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Hey there, how you doing? Better, especially once I get out of here. We are gonna make this civilian life work for you, soldier. Thanks, Doc. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> hey, uh, how's civilian life working for you? So far, so good. I remember what it was like for me back in those early days. Man, it was rough. I was a total fish out of water. I got that. Well, I am going to write prescriptions for your blood pressure and your cholesterol, but I need you to promise me that you will take the meds as directed. I promise. All right, and I want to see you in my office in two weeks for a checkup. We're going to get you well. Okay, Doc. Hey, how's Mickey doing? He's good. Uh, would you excuse me a second? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Hey, boy. <laughs> Oh, yo, good to see you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Oh, I missed you, boy. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get you out of here. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, Jack. Hey, so we spoke to Danny Murphy. He's a bit of a slippery character, but he did provide us with an alibi. When are you supposed to meet with Alexander? He said his car broke down on the way. You don't believe him? Not sure. We're checking it out. And the night of the robbery at the medical supply? Yeah, same deal. Different alibi. And Stringer's alibi? Nothing checks out with him. So we have asked a judge for a search warrant. Stringer's lying. Please don't let this be a dead end. Let's keep the faith. I'll let you know as soon as I do. Okay. about that party on Saturday? Mm. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about that. What do people wear to those kind of parties? See, it's kind of just like not happening. It was canceled? Sort of, yeah, yeah. What do you mean sort of? It was either canceled or it wasn't. Okay, the party's still on for now, but I just like don't think it makes sense for you to come with me. Why not? Well, they already invited too many people, so they had to make some cuts, and... And I'm the only one who can't go. Well... It's fine. I get it. You do? Yeah. I mean, you're protecting me. Let's face it, I'm not even on the edge of popular, so I'm not going to fit in with anyone, and you don't want me to have a bad time. No, it, it's not that. I just... It's fine. I'll be fine. I'll go to the movies with Grandpa. Hi, Jack. We found Murphy. Great. Not really. He's dead. Happened maybe a couple hours ago. Hey, Rachel. Danny Murphy was found dead last night. Yeah, I heard. The police are refusing to give anyone any quotes. Good job. Yeah. It's too coincidental. Someone wanted or needed him dead. Who are you thinking? Well, who benefits? The brother, Mr. Stringer. Well, Leonard had the most to gain from Murphy's death. Stringer had motive to kill Ross, but Murphy? Yeah, but is that enough to make either of them the killer? It's just too convenient. 
Danny Murphy, Ross's only son and heir, suddenly enters the picture and then winds up dead. Yeah, but you did say he had a history of drug addiction, right? What if it's a drug deal gone bad? Well, it's possible. Something's missing. The Alexanders, Stringer, I think they're all lying, Avery. I just can't prove it. Jack's a great detective. I've reported on a lot of his cases. He checks every lead and every clue. If there's something there, Rachel, he's gonna find it. Well, he wants me to stay out of it for now. He thinks it's too dangerous. I just can't let it go. Then don't. Well, someone did tell me once that I need to keep asking questions because you never know when a story's going to break wide open. Some really good advice, Rachel. Meredith mentioned your visit to the office. So you know about Danny Murphy? Yes. Unfortunately, he was found dead last night. You don't seem very upset. <sighs> Forgive me. I never met the man. You're a doctor. I, I don't understand why you're here. I'm here because I was your brother's doctor. And I'm helping the police look into who benefits from his death. Well, if you're implying that I had anything to do with it or that I had designs on my brother's money, you couldn't be more wrong. I hope that someone finds some answers, though. Thanks again for coming by, though. Huh? <clears throat> hey! We didn't see you at lunch today. So we wondered if you were hiding from us. No, I just felt like being on my own. I need you to make some posters for the car wash and I need to review them so we can put them up after last period. I've decided I'm not working on the car wash, Abby. What do you mean? I think I'm gonna pass on being on the cheerleading squad too, but thanks for asking me. I'm glad you came in. We need to see you in less than a year next time, understand you? All right, stay warm. Oh, Jack, what are you doing here? I'm your next patient. What? No, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I have some interesting information about the pharmaceutical robbery. Oh. Okay. So an employee gave the perps a key code. Then faced with a charge of conspiracy, that employee then identified the man that he was working with, Francis O'Rourke. When he was arrested, most of the stolen oxy was found at his apartment. Okay, where does that take us? Well, then I later found out that O'Rourke had previously done time for possession with intent to distribute at Lanes Creek Prison. I'm not making a connection. Guess who O'Rourke's cellmate was at Lanes Creek? Who? Phil Lewis, Meredith Alexander's brother. Did O'Rourke implicate him in the robbery? No, but we're picking him up as we speak. We're gonna question him. Can I listen in? What? No. You can't do that. Oh, come on, don't cut me out. This is too important to me. Rachel. Jack? <laughs> Why did I know that you were gonna ask me this? I'm gonna take that as a yes. I haven't seen Frankie O'Rourke since Lane's Creek. And I don't know nothing about any drug robbery. You know, I would like to believe you, Phil. I would, but O'Rourke had an accomplice. Not me. They stole more than just the Oxycontin. They also took a package of succinylcholine. I don't know what that is. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Succinylcholine is the drug that was used to kill Ross Alexander. So? Maybe it wasn't your idea. You don't really strike me as someone who's smart enough to hatch a scheme to poison a man with obscure chemical. And who is smart enough? We'll find out. Whoever it is stands to benefit from Ross's death. So Lewis denied being involved in the robbery or knowing anything about the succinyl calling. Of course he did. Why would you implicate yourself in a murder? No, Rourke's not talking, so now we have no way to connect Lewis to anything. Phil Lewis's cellmate is caught in a robbery where an obscure toxin was stolen, and that obscure toxin was used in a murder. How much more proof do you need? I need more. 
Everything we have right now is premised on speculation, and the DA is going to want a motive. Why now? Okay, well, Phil may have thought that if he killed Ross, Leonard would give him some of the money, or maybe Leonard was involved. Really? A successful businessman has to kill his brother in order to get the inheritance. It doesn't add up. And where does Danny Murphy's murder fit in with this? A stringer. All right, what are you saying? I think we need to keep digging. For the win. No way, you can't beat me with that. G-E-E-K. Geek. That's stupid and it's not even a real word. Wanna look it up? <laughs> what are you saying? All right, well, good game. I have homework. Okay, bye. Bye. I saw that look. What look? The look that says you two are keeping a secret from me. Spill. No, there's nothing. Oh, I know you want to. Okay, fine. I quit the cheerleaders. What? Why? A lot of reasons, but mostly because they were mean to Matthew. Really? Yeah. Like, he can be annoying sometimes, but he's still my brother. Oh, honey. I think that that is a very good reason. Come here. I better go do my homework. Good idea. Thanks for seeing me again. Well, you made it sound like it was important. Yes. As I mentioned on the phone, the police believe that Ross was murdered. Yeah, you know, I, I still can't believe that that's what's happened. I know. So, did Ross have any business dealings that went sour? Anything that may have caused someone to want to harm him? Nothing that I can think of. He always played it very safe. He never took any kind of risk? No. Well, in fact, Meredith was the one who had the high risk tolerance, especially when it came to investing. Way too much, if you ask me. And Ross didn't participate in any of that? Anything that may have attracted the wrong kind of people? Never. In fact, I remember one time Meredith came to him and asked him to go in on a crypto investment. A cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And if I recall, she wanted something quick with a high return potential. Huge red flag, if you ask me. And Ross didn't go for it? Nope. No, he wanted to make sure that the venture was legitimate. Of course, once Meredith and Leonard lost all of their principal, there was no way that Ross was going to go in. Is there anything else I should know? Look, they were my clients, so I'm not hurting myself by telling you this. Meredith and Leonard came to Ross for a loan after the crypto loss. What kind of loan? A big one. He asked me what I thought. I advised him against it. He never gave him a dime. Avery, it's Rachel. Can you look into the Alexander's finances? Anything that's public record. I heard they may have lost a small fortune investing in crypto. I'll call you later. Bye. Jack, I'm headed to the parking garage on Franklin and Vine. Call me.
Lynn? 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 It's Rachel. I'm fine. It's just bruises. Did you get a good look at the vehicle? Mid-size SUV, four doors, no plates. I'm putting out an APV. I'm also putting a uniform outside of your house. You don't have to do that, Jim. Rachel, you're in danger. I will be fine. Yeah. Okay. Meredith and Leonard are here. We'll continue this conversation. They are. I'm interviewing them and Stringer. He's next, sitting outside with his lawyer and he's looking mighty nervous, I might add. Are you sure that you are okay? Because you could hit your head. I'm not, I'm fine, I might not know this, but us dog people are blessed with pretty hard heads. Okay. Succinylcholine was used to kill your brother. And that is far from the only coincidence that we have uncovered. We've already established that your brother-in-law is connected to a robbery of the same medication that was used to kill Ross. Then why haven't you arrested my brother? You have no idea about the relationship between me and Ross. Your allegations that I would harm him are insane. I don't know how many times I have to keep saying this. I did not kill my brother. I could ever do such a thing. Maybe it wasn't your idea. Maybe it was your brother's. After all, he's a convicted felon. My brother served his time. He would never risk going back to prison. Cut of the money from Ross's estate would be quite a payday for an ex-con, wouldn't it? Is this the best you can do, detective? Make up a bunch of uncredited, unsupported allegations. Are we done? For now. He's right. We don't have enough proof to convince a jury. So now what? Still waiting on ballistics for Danny Murphy. Maybe that'll give us something. Mr. Alexander, I don't think killing Ross was your idea. Everything I've heard tells me that you adored him. I shouldn't be talking to you. Leonard, come on. We're leaving. I didn't murder anybody. I want to believe you, Dave, but the problem is you're not a very good liar, are you? I'm not lying. I mean, it's not looking good for you. Just those emails that you sent Ross, it kind of makes you look guilty of murder. Sending emails isn't a crime. Maybe. But uh, you have bigger problems, Dave. You know that search warrant that we did on you? It turned up some suspicious items. Why do you have syringes at your house, Dave? Hi, Avery. Hey, Rachel. Got a bit of interesting news for you. What's that? You're asking about the Alexander's business dealings. Yeah? Turns out you're right. They lost a bundle. Mortgaged their house, their assets. My contact at the bank just told me that Meredith came in and tried to borrow an outrageous amount of money to cover their losses, but was turned down. Thanks, Avery. Yeah, I hope it helps. It just might. Qui bono. So I tell you what's gonna happen here, Dave. We're gonna run some tests. If I find even a trace of succinylcholine at your house, 
I will be arresting you for murder. Leonard's, it is not Stringer. Come here when you get this message. <laughs> you I thought I told you to leave us alone. I'm not a very good listener. No, you're not. Phil? What the hell is going on? What is she doing here? What was I supposed to do? She knows. She knows what? I put all the pieces together, Leonard. And what pieces did you put together, Dr. Hunt? Meredith, what are you doing? Where did you get that? Talk. You lost everything in that crypto bet. So you went to Ross for help. A lot of help. But he turned you down. So you threatened him. You tried to borrow money from Ross? So you devised a plan to kill him and leave no trace. With succinylcholine. You sent your brother out to get you some. And everything was working according to plan until Danny Murphy inconveniently appeared. And then you took care of him, and I'm betting it was with that gun. Meredith? Shut up, Leonard. And then I became an even bigger inconvenience, so you sent someone to take care of me. Is that just about sum it up? One thing's for certain. You know way too damn much for your own good, and that is a very bad thing for you. Meredith, what is she talking about? What are you talking about? We're broke! Leonard! We're broke. And Ross could have helped us, but he didn't. Because he thought he was way too good for us, that we needed to learn something. I had no choice. I. You understand, right? I, I had no choice. But you killed my brother? What? Let's go. Meredith, wait. <laughs> Phil, please, stop! Make a choice, Phil! Get them out of here. Yeah, I am now. She did this all for money. Makes no sense. Murder never does. Hey, listen. We really need to thank you. Without you, we never would have known that Ross was even murdered, let alone found his killers. I think that I am done with murder investigations. I'm so sorry that you got wrapped up in all of this. I'm certainly not sorry that I met you. Me too. Why don't you go home to your kids, Rachel? We can take your statement in the morning. Thank you. Careful, it is hot. Oh, Rick, I've been looking forward to this all week. Rachel tells me that your chicken parm is to die for. It's the best you'll ever have. Well, I hope it lives up to the reputation. Mom, everybody in school is talking about you. Yeah, you're like a local hero. I've got two girls' numbers. Oh, wait, who? I'm not saying. <laughs> I'm gonna get that. Well, who could that be? Yeah, who comes to someone's house at 6 o'clock? Yes. She is yours, and her name is Riley. 
Now kids, a puppy is a really big responsibility. I need you to promise that you're going to take very good care of her. Of course we will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi. 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 Here you go. Here is Riley. Oh my gosh, Grandpa, look. Oh, she's gonna be your best friend forever. And she will always love you. Just like your mom. Jack, thank you for helping. Oh, yeah, the adoption agency was thrilled to find her a new home. So cute. Thank you. I'm flattered. I was talking about the puppy, but I think you knew that. Tương mình sẽ tô về phần bên này Mình sẽ tô phần mỏ cho bạn vịt nha Ở trên mặt nước của mấy cái lá mình cũng sẽ tô luôn nhé Để xe tô phần nước nha
Bức tranh về hai chủ vi của mình đã được hoàn thiện rồi đây Và đây chính là thành quả nha Cảm ơn mọi người đã cùng mình theo dõi đến bây giờ Video của mình đến đây là kết thúc nhé